So IT Chapter 1 was amazing, but IT Chapter 2... Yeah, it kinda sucked. Here's why. So, positives first. The casting here was pretty spot on. All the adult actors look almost identical to the kids from the first movie. The character interactions are also probably the best part about Chapter 2. Surprisingly, the scene where the Losers Club meet again for the first time may have been my favorite scene in the entire movie. It's those personal conversations between the main characters that made me remember why I liked following their child counterparts in Chapter 1 so much. Pennywise once again cements his place as a horror icon, and what Bill Skarsgård does with the role is still something really special. He's still always a scene stealer, and his illusions create some of the most visually creative and entertaining moments in these movies. He brings so much energy into the scenes he's in, that it's impossible to take your eyes off of him when he's doing his thing. His crazy personality combined with the insane horror imagery reminded me of the fun nature that campy horror icons used to have. Now I'm playing with power! <laughs> Great graphics. Lots of horror movies nowadays use really boring and uninspired demons as their villains, which is why I think a lot of them come off as really unmemorable. Since Pennywise can literally morph into whatever he wants, it gives the creators a chance to be really creative and it pays off almost every time. And now onto the negatives. And yeah, I know that was quick. So the problem with this movie is that it really doesn't offer much of a story. The first act is interesting because the characters are figuring out if they want to go back to Derry, and if so, how they're going to take down Pennywise. But after that, the movie meanders for a really long time. Mind you, this movie is three hours long, so when the pacing is bad, you really feel that runtime. I'm a viewer that was really hyped for this movie, and I checked my watch at the one hour mark, so that's kind of fucked. Lots of scenes are just characters having flashbacks or visions from Pennywise that say something about their character basically. There's not much attention put on the main goal of killing Pennywise until the end. They also reintroduce a character from chapter 1 that you think might play a big part in the story, but really doesn't. It's like they had plans for this character and then at the end of the script they forgot about him and then had to plug him in somewhere. Also, since chapter 1 happened, the whole mystery of how Pennywise works is kinda lost. I was hoping that this film would be more interesting than chapter 1 because of Pennywise's really weird backstory in the novel. I thought that they were gonna delve more into this in the movie, and we were gonna get some really crazy lore that most people wouldn't have expected. They tried to do that in one of the scenes, but literally only scratched the surface of this stuff, which added almost nothing to the table. The director said that Pennywise's backstory is big enough for its own movie, but why do that when you could incorporate that stuff into this? Apparently in the book, Pennywise is some intradimensional being or something that came from Stephen King's Macroverse, which I know it sounds weird, but it gets more interesting once you read more about it on Wikipedia. The ending to this movie is also pretty underwhelming. Mr. Sunday Movies sums up how it ended in the book pretty nicely, which I think would have been a much more impactful and unique way to end the series. What happens in the book, and I am totally butchering this by trying to condense it, you have to bite down onto Pennywise's tongue and then enter the macroverse to defeat him in an astral form of sorts, and that's where you come across the transdimensional turtle, which is an enemy of Pennywise. I won't say what happens at the end, but safe to say... Well, it's also predictable. There's no element of surprise. You can see everything coming. <laughs> ah! Did that surprise you? It's funny though, because apparently Stephen King does get shit for not always having good endings to his stories, which they poke fun at a lot in this movie. It Chapter 2 is much better if you see it as a character piece that complements Chapter 1. Chapter 1 is a great standalone experience, but Chapter 2 is more like a bonus to an already great film. It's actually really similar to Avengers Endgame in that way, and how that movie complements Infinity War. However, Endgame at least has a more engaging plot which allows it to stand alone a little bit better even though it focuses a lot on character moments like this movie. So in the end, I'm going to give IT Chapter 2 a 6.5 out of 10. It's still a fun time because of its characters, but doesn't really touch the greatness of the first movie.